are watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Good evening, welcome to As I See It, A Blind Woman's View. Thank you for joining me again this month. And as I always say, first and foremost, my name is Andrea Judici. I have with me my guide dog, who I choose not to introduce for his safety and focus, and our safety as a team. And the other thing I always say is that my favorite thing to do is have a topic that I love and find an expert to talk about it. Because that's the way that I look good, and that's what I want to do. So. In the past few months, I've highlighted some of a couple of the centers of the Oak Hill School, which is actually no longer the School for the Blind, but it is it is broadened in its scope, and over the years, as as a residential school for blind students, has no longer fit with the needs of the community. And if you'll remember, we had someone in here from the Equipment Restoration Center talking about the durable medical equipment that is for sale. Um, that's been rehabbed and is um, available at a much reduced price. And that was Dawn. And we had Kelly in from Chapter 126, which is the Accessible Fitness Center. And it was really wonderful to talk about those programs, but there's so much more that Oak Hill has to offer. And a lot of people, myself included, until I became a staff member there, didn't know about it. So I have with me tonight Katie Hanley, who is the director of Oak Hill Centers. And she's the expert that's going to make me look fabulous tonight when we learn about what Oak Hill does. Thank you, Katie. Thank you for having me. So tell me about, I've just mentioned that there are centers. As I recall, there are eight mm -hmm. in, all, in total. And if you could just sort of start explaining what they are and how they work and who they serve, that would be great. And I'll just jump in and interrupt when I awesome <laughs> when I want to. Yes, please do. So, um, as you mentioned, Oak, Oak Hill is uh, formerly the Connecticut Institute for the Blind. It was a residential school for blind children for many years, um, and in about the 70s, it changed its uh, its mission because at that time legislation changed and students were able to be educated in their communities with their peers. Um, and about the same time, they opened up a group home for adults with developmental disabilities, and so. Um, it, be, it came to be known as Oak Hill, um, which became so much more than just a school. Um, and so to this day, we have a, what we call community programs, which is uh, residential programs, day programs for adults with developmental disabilities. We are also still a school. Oak Hill School um, still exists. We're an accredited special education school. And then we have a cluster of specialized programs called Oak Hill Centers. Um, and I'm the director of Oak Hill Centers, and um, we, we have many programs, uh, and we try to find innovative ways to reach people with all different kinds of disabilities. Um, and so uh, among those programs are a birth to three program, uh, the Birth to Three program is what you would imagine. We serve um, infants and children ages birth to three. Um, if a child is born uh, at risk of having a developmental delay or born with a disability, um, the state of Connecticut offers Birth to Three services and Oak Hill is one of the providers of those services. Um, so we have a team of therapists, including occupational therapists, speech therapists, 
um, physical therapists, special education teachers, social workers, to go into homes and work with families to help them get those children to their developmental milestones. Um, it's an incredible program to be a part of, to see these therapists coaching families to help their children get to where they need to be. It's, it's in my opinion, one of the most important things we do. Uh, when you consider somebody's, you know, the lifespan of somebody with a disability and what you can do at the beginning of their life to help them get to where they need to be. Absolutely. And is that just local to Hartford? area or is it throughout the whole state of Connecticut? The whole state of Connecticut um, provides these services and there's um, over 30 providers that do birth to three services. Oak Hill is one of them. Uh, so Oak Hill provides services in Hartford, Bloomfield, and Windsor. Okay. Yep. And just to, to back up one moment, mm -hmm. the school that you mentioned, where is that mm -hmm. special education school? So, uh, as a, yes, as I mentioned, we're accredited special education school and we provide um, services, special education services to students with significant disabilities. So they may or may not be able to be served within their local school district. So the school district comes to Oak Hill and asks for our help and we provide the services for those students. Um, we have 11 classrooms across the state. Oh, so, very cool. so it's actually not necessarily on our campus anymore, although we do have a classroom in our, on our campus in Hartford. Uh, we're, we're all over the state. And when uh, possible, actually, most of the situations, we rent space within a public school so the students are surrounded by their peers. Perfect. So birth to three, birth and, the to school, three. and that's one of the centers. Yep. Um, another special center that we have is called the Center for Relationship and Sexuality Education. Um, and this is a very unique, innovative center talking about a topic that many people don't usually like to talk about when, it's, when it comes to people with disabilities. Um, it was developed by a social worker named Lucille DeGay, who worked at Oak Hill in the group homes, who just found that there were too many people who had grow, grown through school and grew up and were now living uh, perhaps in a group home or maybe at home um, with a disability who had never heard anything about their bodies, never learned about um, healthy relationships, um, and it was potentially getting them into trouble. Um, Furthermore, the statistics of abuse for people with disabilities is actually very high, um, something that people don't like to think about and also, also is not uh, well discussed or published. Um, so that center focuses on that. We do, um, we bring research to the community to let them know. We also have created materials for people with disabilities to let them know about what a healthy relationship looks like and how you can um, have meaningful relationships in your life. And when I say relationships, I don't just mean intimate relationships, which we do talk about. I also mean friendships. Um, and having a disability for some people can be very isolating. So we like to find ways to support people to have those meaningful relationships. That's great. And I'm, I'm imagining um, the neat, the Equipment Restoration Center is open on sat what, two Saturdays a month. Mm -hmm. And usually during one of those Saturdays, there's a social club. And is that part of that? Um, yeah. Is that, is that an out branch of that particular what you were just talking about? That's a, that's a great question. It's actually not the social the social <laughs> club. The social club is a wonderful activity that our community programs division offers. Okay. Um, and so that is opportunity for anybody that lives in our group home or participate in our day programs to come and have fun together and do a kind of a coordinated activity and spend some time with their friends. They have a lot of fun. It's really hard to work when they're all there because <laughs> I want to go have fun with them. Yes. <laughs> not yeah. that work isn't fun. Here I am interviewing my Uber boss talking about how I don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to have fun it at work. A, we yes. always have fun at work. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so that's the Center for Relationship and Sexuality Education. Um, it's one of the centers that I am, um, have spent a lot of time working on and most proud of. And actually, uh, right now we're undergoing a project to uh, translate our materials into Spanish so that they can be available in English and Spanish and then also have them uh, digitized so that um, what was printed before is now available as a digital download oh, so that it can be more accessible yep. for people who use screen readers um, and also for people who live very far away. We've actually sold our materials across the country in the UK and in Australia so now it'll be easy to download. Oh that's fabulous. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so in addition to those centers uh, there is NEAT 
uh, which you talked about. And there's uh, two, there's actually two centers within NEAT. Um, the first is uh, ne um, the New England Assistive Technology Center, which yes, is what that's not, NEAT stands that's for. That's not where you go to buy your meat <laughs> for Sunday dinner. <laughs> A lot of people get that yes, confused. Yes, we are it's, saying it's NEAT, NEAT. <laughs> NEAT, which stands for New England Assistive Technology. Um, we are an assistive technology services department. Uh, we provide um, services to uh, professionals in the field. We provide services to educators in the school districts throughout the, the state. Um, we also provide di direct service if a student needs an assistive technology and evaluation. Our specialists go to the school, uh, review the records, um, see, the, see the child or the student in their in their environment, it could be the classroom, it could be at home, and make recommendations on what technology is available that might help them learn more independently. Um, we also provide services um, to adults who maybe have, um, who have an injury that is preventing them from going back to work. So we might do an evaluation and give them some techniques on, or uh, tips or suggestions for technology that they could buy that could get them back to work. Um, so that's kind of the gist of our assistive technology services um, at NEAT. We have a lot to offer. Um, we also do uh, workshops, professional development around assistive technology and, and stuff like that. We're, we like to call ourselves NEAT freaks because <laughs> yes, we, love, we, we love technology, we love talking about technology, um, and specifically how that technology can help somebody with a disability. It's really cool because before I ever got to be an employee with NEAT, I benefited from those services in that um, I received technology training. Mm -hmm. And that was part of how I learned how awesome it was to be at NEAT and how I actually decided I'm going to work there. I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> I'm going that's, to make it happen. That's great. And I just, I just want to say, because it's, it's not something that, uh, NEAT is really for everyone. I mean, there is, there was, um, an, a, I found an old brochure from NEAT when I came on board and it said, you or someone you know needs NEAT. And yes. it really is true because, um, we are a disability services agency and a lot of people know us for working with people with intellectual disabilities or developmental disabilities or for people who are blind or have low vision. But really we serve so many people at NEAT. Um, some of the students we see have um, learning disabilities or learning differences uh, like dyslexia um, or uh, just need a little help in certain areas. Um, so it, it really is it from, we cover the spectrum. Yes. And then there's also the Equipment Restoration Center, which we featured here. Right. But as an, as, since that's where I work, um, that's, the, that's the aspect of NEAT that I work in, mm -hmm. it's so amazing to me that on any given day, mm -hmm. you know, a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, a parent, mm -hmm. a grandchild, a niece, a nephew, a mom, a dad, a husband, a wife, everyone who walks through the door has some relationship with someone who mm -hmm. needs maybe some very major piece of a... Um, durable medical equipment, like, yep. a, like a power wheelchair, mm -hmm. um, or maybe they need something as quote unquote simple as a cane mm -hmm. or, or a mm -hmm. raised toilet seat. But whatever it is that they need, when they mm -hmm. walk out the door with it or roll out the door with it, mm -hmm. their, life is that, th their life is immediately better. And it's so cool to be a part of that. Yeah, I yeah I work in the building with you where the equipment restoration center is, and it's really it's really interesting to see somebody find exactly what they were looking for and be able to to leave with that in hand. Yes. Um, so the equipment restoration center, or the ERC as we call it, um, is located at Neat in Hartford, uh, in the north end of Hartford on Coventry Street, and um, it is a very unique place. It is um, the only location for the recycling and reuse of durable medical equipment in the state of Connecticut. Um, uh, one of our biggest supporters is the Connecticut Tech Act project. Um, and so they, they help <clears throat> us uh, make that possible. And what we do is we, we accept donations of used durable medical equipment. We sterilize it, we clean it, we get it all ready, and then we sell it back to the public um, at a fraction of what it would cost new. Um, and so uh, last year, we saved a total of $1.1 million for customers buying equipment. Wow. 
That is so cool. So we sold um, over 2,000 pieces of durable medical equipment at about 15% of what it would cost if they bought it new, totaling over a million dollars in savings to customers. So you're talking about people who um, maybe need a, an extra chair that insurance doesn't cover, or they can't wait until insur to go through the insurance yep. process and they, well, they wanna get that piece of equipment right away. And interestingly, and I've, I've always found this so interesting, so bathrooms are one of the places that are one of the highest rates of injuries. There's usually there's often poor lighting, it can be slippery, people are you know not paying attention. There's, and many insurance companies don't pay for bathroom-based equipment, mm -hmm. raised toilet seats, tub mm -hmm. transfer benches, shower chairs. Mm -hmm. And so where you need that the most, mm -hmm. insurance often doesn't pay. And so that's another place that we can really help. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, if you had Don on the program, which you, yes. you said you did, that's <laughs> yeah. fantastic. Um, what's, what's great about working with him and the rest of the team at NEAT is that they really practice what they preach. And we are really truly um, NEAT freaks in that we we are always looking for ourselves too. What makes this easier for me? What makes my desk, for instance, more ergonomic? How, would it, how could we make this easier for me? How, do I, how can I adapt my environment to make it easier for me? So you'll see many of us at standing desks because it's more convenient, or we're using the technology ourselves because it makes our work life easier. Um, and so that's, you know, that's what we kind of say to people that come through the door is, you don't have to suffer through taking a shower or getting into the bathtub, whatever it is. If having a handle there would make it easy for you, let's make that adaptation happen. Exactly. Um, and so the team there is actually really wonderful to talk to, um, including yourself, the, who, <laughs> is, you. who is there. People come in and they ask for something and then you can show them all the wide variety of things we have that will help them in their life. Yes. Awesome. Um, so the other wonderful program that is housed at NEAT is our Eleanor A. Brooks Blindness Related Support Center. Um, and that is run by Steve Famigletti, um, who uh, is a fantastic um, source of knowledge around technology for people who are blind or have low vision. And also one of the experts I brought on my show months ago to make me look good about that. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Pretty soon I will have worked through everyone at work. What will yeah. we do? We'll have to go into reruns. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so Steve um, uh, researches um, and tries out new technology that could help somebody who is blind or has low vision access whatever it is that they need to access. Um, and he works with students in school districts. He works with uh, people who are older. He works... Um, with people that are looking for help with recreational things, with things at home, with things at work, with things at school. Um, and it's all about technology for people who are blind or have low vision. Um, I, I learned a lot from Steve when I came on board um, and did a couple of evaluations with him and trainings with him. And we had some fantastic experiences um, where, for instance, um, we were working with a woman who was in her 90s who had been blind since she was about five years old and now late in her years was um, losing her hearing as well. Um, and so we uh, utilized the, her great skill set in reading Braille. She happened to have read Braille her whole life and in fact was a Braille teacher. Um, and so what we were able to do was to get her a refreshable Braille display, which is a small um, computer with a, one line of Braille that electronically kind of scrolls through so that you don't have to have a huge book in front of you. It kind of does it for you electronically. Um, and it can sync with an iPhone. So Steve went and trained her to sync it with an iPhone so that she could text her grandchildren and receive text from her oh, grandchildren. That's awesome. And in fact, her great grandchildren. So, um, you know, it was, it was after that training and seeing him teach somebody and seeing a woman in her 90s, you know, um, use her strength in, as a braille reader to learn something new with technology, it was so incredible to me um, that uh, it kind of changed my perspective on what is capable, what is possible for people. Um, so that's one of my, what's kind of one of my favorite instances with Steve. That's awesome. Yeah. It is really amazing when you, when you realize that there is technology out there to, 
to meet your needs. And, and it, technology is changing so much as a, as a person who's been blind for um, many years, yeah. <laughs> all my years so far, but that's, that's many. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, just remembering back to the first computer I used in, in fifth grade, and it was, you know, an Apple IIe, and, like, how far we've come with an iPhone mm -hmm. and, a, you know, tablets, and it's, it's really exciting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it broadens, it's really about, assistive technology is really, um, it's, it's access technology. It's whatever can give you access to the world in a way that you couldn't have before, um, is what assistive, assistive technology aims to do. Um, I mean, really, we talk when we do presentations, we even talk about guide dogs being assistive technology. Absolutely. And people don't think about that nope. in that way because they're living beings. Right. Um, but it really is um, a very high tech <laughs> it is. piece of assistive technology, which without it would, would be, you know, a very uh, really different close experience. People. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, that's 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 really true. Yeah, it's funny because I've never heard you use that analogy, but I've used it myself. Yeah, we talk so. about it all the time. Yeah, and when people come in, we do a lot of presentations to students, and we do uh, we invite people in to learn about it, and um, we show them all different kinds of devices. And Steve will come and present with his guide dog, and. Um, and then we'll give them a trick question at the end and we'll say, what do you think is the most expensive piece of assistive <laughs> technology in this room? And nobody guesses the dog. Oh, that's funny. And it's a great, it's a great it intro is. to talking that's about awesome. the process of, you know, uh, training a guide dog and, and everything like that. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, I'd love to talk about uh, the chapter one, chapter 126, Sports and Fitness, which yep. is a center that I know you had Kelly on and yes. you talked a lot about. Um, chapter 126 Sports and Fitness is uh, an adapted fitness center located in Bristol, Connecticut. Um, we offer memberships to anybody who um, wants to participate. Uh, a lot of the people that come to Chapter 126 are people who um, may never consider themselves as having a disability. They may be somebody who uh, had an injury and uh, need to do some physical therapy and need to work out in an environment where the staff understand what they're going through um, and that there's equipment that can adapt to them as needed. So um, in the fitness center, there is equipment that can accommodate wheelchairs, um, we have a zero gravity uh, treadmill machine um, where you can alter the weight that you are walking or running on as you build strength and then slowly add your body weight to, to the machine so that you can build that strength. Um, it's called an Alter G. It's a very cool piece of equipment. It is. It's really cool. Have you used it? <laughs> I haven't. Yeah. Um, but I've heard a lot about it. Yes, very <laughs> cool. Um, and then we offer sports activities um, for everybody of all ages. Um, we have play groups from the birth to three providers in the area that come and um, the kids come with their parents and play. We have a group of kids that are homeschooled come and play in the gym. Um, we have uh, we're, we have a new wheelchair, women's wheelchair basketball team. Um, which we're hoping will become an official team of the Women's Wheelchair League um, in the nation. Um, we do a whole lot of stuff there. There's a, a fantastic team of people there, which I know that you know pretty well. They are. They're um, great. We, this year, Chapter 126 was an official charity of the Hartford Marathon. Um, so we had a team together uh, at the Hartford Marathon, and I wonder if you'd be willing to share your experience with I that. I would. It was great. So I, I, I'll pretend that I did the marathon. No, I'm just kidding. I did not do the marathon. I'm officially saying that. Not yet. Not, not yet. Baby Look steps. Um, so what I chose to do was to join a colleague and also Kelly, who was here earlier in, in, in this year, and we chose to walk the 5K, and it was amazing. It was so I've, I've never been in an official race like that. And so I didn't understand the, what it would be like to have people along the street with cowbells and the half marathoners are running by. And it was like, it was really amazing. And then when you get to the end, which you think maybe you'll never do, and you get to the end and there's loudspeakers and people are calling your names and there's this big arch. And it was just, it was unbelievable. It was so exciting. And, um, 
Lisa and Kelly and I and my guide dog went striding across that finish line. And at the moment that we crossed the finish line, it felt like we just started. It was very, <laughs> very it was hard to believe it was only 9.30 in the morning yeah. because it felt like we'd been up forever, which we kind of had. Yeah. Um, but it was amazing. We had on our team, we had 46 people participating mm -hmm. in, the, in the event. We had a whole bunch of volunteers. We raised over $5,000 mm -hmm. and it was, so awesome to be a part of it. I just, I can't wait for next year. I really can't. What was the training like for you? Were you able to go to chapter 126 and get support from there? I was. Chapter 126 offered to Oak Hill employees who are going to be on the team an opportunity to, to, to become, um, to have free training. And it was great. And I have to say that those personal trainers really know how to work you. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is not for sissies. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I know like we were talking about Steve. He used the mm -hmm. Alter G. He actually ran the 5K, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. He had not ever done anything like that before. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a huge sort of new experience for him. And I know lots of people, Lisa, who were, walked the 5K with me, um, she trained at Chapter 126 for that. So we all did, and, and we worked with all of the different staff and the personal trainers and the, and the sit fit classes. I thought sit fit was like for sissies. You kind of sit there and you, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I was so tired at the end of sit fit. I like, the dog was hauling me out of the chair. It was pretty funny. So it was, it was a great experience. Wonderful. And I, I really am excited about next year. Good, good. Um, yeah, so Chapter 126, another fabulous uh, center, one of our centers. And uh, the last two centers I want to talk about are our camps. Um, we have uh, Oak Hill Camp at Camp Harkness. Um, it has been a camp program that has run, uh, been running at Oak Hill for decades. Um, I started going when I was six. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Has it changed much, much since then that you can remember? You know, remember? in some ways it has. Yeah. In some <laughs> There's actually bathrooms in the cabins. That's huge. <laughs> <laughs> and showers. Yeah. We went from showering in the dining hall yeah. to having a shower house. How luxurious. I know, to having yeah. showers in the cabin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it used to be three weeks. I think when I was six, I went away for three weeks, which mom was not happy about. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but no, it's it's a fabulous place. So yeah. um, I don't want us to run out of time. So tell me, tell us quickly about what Harkness and... Um, Hemlocks do. Yeah, so um, so Harkness uh, is a summer camp that we run for mostly for adults with developmental disabilities, um, but there are also still a lot of alumni from the school when it was the Connecticut Institute for the Blind that come. Um, it's a great opportunity on the water um, in Waterford, Connecticut. Um, there's plenty of traditional camp activities um, and all adapted for people with disabilities just to meet their needs to make sure they can have um, a wonderful time. Um, and then also recently Oak Hill took over um, Easter Seals Camp Hemlocks in Hebron, Connecticut, um, which is a fantastic facility uh, that includes uh, an indoor pool, a climbing tower, um, and beautiful grounds with paved paths. It's a completely accessible facility. Um, and so we offer Again, summer camp experiences for people with all different kinds of disabilities. Um, our, our staff at both of these camps are fully trained um, to give people who might not otherwise be able to go camping, give them a camping experience that is safe and fun. And I can just say this from personal experience that when you are not with a whole bunch of other blind people, in my case, that's the only disability I can talk about, um, when you go to something like Camp Harkness, you realize that the the regular experience is being blind and the sighted people are the minority. And that just having the regularness is mm -hmm. really cool. I would love to talk about this forever because we could just do this, but <laughs> unfortunately that won't work. Um, I want to thank you, Katie, for coming in. I want to encourage everyone to go to oakhillct.org to learn more about all of the wonderful things that the Oak Hill centers are doing. I want to encourage all of you to have a wonderful month and to be kind to each other. And I want to thank you for tuning in to, as I see it, A Blind Woman's View. Don't forget to email me at ablindwomansview at gmail.com. Thank you and good evening.